Hi guys, welcome back to Professor Rank. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create variables in Kotlin. In addition to that, we'll look at various data types that you have to choose from. We'll look at a couple different types of comments and also how you can create constant variables in Kotlin versus, you know, regular old changeable variables. All right, so let's dig into it. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and get started by looking at a couple types of comments you can have. And these are going to look very familiar to anybody with any kind of C language or C-like language experience. So you've got your line comments, right, which get preceded with two forward slashes. And you've also got block comments. So forward slash star to open it and star forward slash to close it. So these are block comments, also known as multi-line comments. Okay, so you've got those, and you also have got various types of data types, okay? So let's take a look at what some of those are, okay? So um, you have um, these possibilities, okay? You've got a Boolean data type, okay, which can be assigned uh, either true or false. Okay, you've got character data types, which you can assign characters, individual characters, and you end up using the single quotes for the characters like you do in C-like languages. You've got a string data type, all right? So you can assign to it strings of characters, and you use double quotes like you do in other you know, C-type languages. Again, this is gonna look very familiar to the majority of you, okay? So you've got that. Right, so another thing that you have is you've got your numeric data types, all right? And you have two general categories. You've got integer data types and you've got floating point data types, okay? So what are the integer data types? Well, you've got the byte type, okay? And the byte type can store um, from values from negative 127 to positive 128. Okay, um, and you've got the short data type, and that can store from negative 32,768 to um, positive 32,767. Uh, okay, you've got that. You've got the int type, and that can store big number, <laughs> big range. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to copy and paste that one because it'll take too long. I won't remember it, it'll take too long to type it out, okay? So you've got that. You've also got the long data type, okay? And this, this data type can store a huge range. So I'm gonna copy and paste this one too because otherwise I, there's no way I'm gonna remember this. I'm just giving you these numbers just to give you a rough idea of what you can store in each. So in the long, you can go whatever the heck this number is, how small this is to however the heck big this is. So we're talking like quad, why quintillions or something? I don't know. I don't even know what the name of the number is, but it's really, really, really big or really, really, really small. Okay, now floating point data types, you've got two options here. And um, this is going to correspond to what you're familiar with. Again, if you're familiar with any C type language. So you've got the option of the float data type. And this is, you know, the main difference between the float data type and the double data type, these are your two options. What distingu distinguishes between the two is levels of precision in terms of decimal places. Remember, computers can't store floating point numbers 100% accurately all the time. They store approximations. And you, know, you have a limit on memory to how many decimal places that you can store. And then after that, you know, because of rounding errors and these types of things, um, you, know, you lose some accuracy. So with the float data type, your floating point numbers are going to be accurate out to about uh, six or seven decimal places, okay? So the float is kind of like a single precision data type, okay? So that's, that's kind of the idea. Uh, the name of this is, this is the base, this is your single precision, right? Whereas double is your double precision data type. So a double precision data type or the double data type is accurate out to about 15 decimal places okay so if you need you know really fine accuracy something out to 15 decimal places guaranteed then you're going to use the double all right if you don't need um, that much accuracy then you can use the float you know and 
double takes up more memory to store those extra decimal places than the float does. Okay, so those are your data types. Okay, so let's see how we can declare variables in Kotlin. So in Kotlin, you're gonna need one of two keywords, either val or var, all right? So if you choose var, this means that you've got a variable that can change, okay? So you declare the variable, you assign five to it, and then later on in your program, you can change it to say two. Okay, now val means that it's kind of like a constant variable. It means once you've set it, that's it. You can't change it later, all right? So you could think of, you know, like a const from other C languages or, you know, final, you know, from, from other languages. So let's see what this looks like. So we'll say var x equals one. Okay, and we're done. So this is a variable that can change. Okay, so X can change. We initialize it with one. So when you create variables in Kotlin, you have to initialize them. Okay, you don't have a choice there. You can't leave them uninitialized, that's one thing. Another thing is that there's no semicolon. Okay, so you can see I don't, don't have that. And then a third thing is that you don't have to explicitly type your variables all the time. Right? So you can, and I'll show you how you can um, do that if you want to, but Colin's smart enough to look at that and go, oh, one's an integer, therefore X is gonna be typed int, okay? Now, um, we can <clears throat> change that X to say two, right, by using a subsequent assignment statement, and that's no problem. So let's go ahead now and print out the contents of X, so we can see that working. Okay. So there you go, so there's your two. All right, so yeah, no problem. Now, if we wanted to create a constant version or a, con a variable that could never change, then we would do val. So you could do something like val y equals um, hello world, something like that, right? So now this is gonna be set, this is constant. It can never ever change. So sure, you can print out the contents of it. Okay, that's not a problem. But if you try to do an assignment statement, you know, something like this, you see the red squiggle, you're gonna have problems. You can't do it because val means constant. It's like the constant keyword, okay? So yeah, that's the difference between val and var. Now, you know, what are all the different types of variables? Well, we talked about it, right? We talked about Boolean, cares, strings, integer data types, you know, the bytes, the, the shorts, the ints, the longs. So X is gonna be type int because you've got an integer being assigned to it. Y is type string because you've got a string assigned to it. But you can explicitly type, okay? So for example, um, I could do something like, um, like uh, this, okay? We'll make a Boolean, how about that? Okay, so you can do something like var for variable, it can change and then you can create your um, variable name, we'll call it B for Boolean, and then you put a colon, okay? And then you type the data type name, and then you assign to it a value. So for Booleans, you can have either true or false, okay? Now let's go ahead and print out the contents of that variable. So let's go ahead and see what X and Y um, and B all have, okay? Okay, so you can see two, hello world, and true. Now, why is everything on the same line? Because I was using the print function. Print function puts everything on the same line. Now, if I want to put things on different lines, then I need to use the print line function. So I guess as a bonus in this video, you're gonna get a couple of, you know, you're gonna learn about a couple different types of print functions too. So for example, I could change this to print line, right? And then I could change this to print line, and I can change this to print line, and then the cursor will move to the next line after each uh, variable's contents is printed out. So, you know, if I wanted to have some kind of label, then maybe I do something like this. I say print um, x equals, okay? And then I could do something like um, print y equals, all right? And then I could do something here. I could do something like Oh, print uh, B equals, 
Okay, and then we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so now you can see that things got broken up onto, onto separate lines. All right, so let's look at the different, the other different types of variables. I'll show you examples of, of the other types too. So you've got the um, byte type, which I'll make these all constant just to, you know, I'm just showing you what these examples are. We won't get into more than that. So we've got um, a byte, right? So a byte, okay? Or maybe we'll use cam camel case, a byte. And this is gonna be type byte and we'll assign to it, you know, 22, fine. Um, we'll have val a character, and that's gonna be a character data type, so we're gonna assign a character to it, fine. Then um, we've got um, a short, okay, and we'll assign to it, oops, short equals, um, oh, uh, 1,000. Oops, not a character, 1,000, okay? And then what else do we have? We could do val a int, okay? And we'll assign to it an integer. Okay, and we'll say negative 33. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example of creating a long. So we could do something like this. We can say val a long, right? And long equals, you know, something really big. Okay, no problem. Now, you know, if you didn't want to explicitly state that it's a long data type, what you can do is you can do something like val x, or we already have x, right? So val j, okay, equals, and then do your really big number. Now, right now, that number is such that it's small enough that it could fit inside of an integer variable, right? So you know, that's the default. That's going to be the default behavior since it's within that range for integer variables. Let's go back and look at that range. See, this is only 232,000. The range for integers was from negative, what is this, um, 2 billion and something to positive 2 billion and something. Well, 200,000 falls within that range, right? So the data type of J in this case is going to be um, integer. But if I wanted to make it a long, I could put this little trailing L here, and then that's going to force it to be stored as a long. Um, and similarly, just as a matter of good practice, even if you're explicitly you know, creating a long here, you should be putting the L at the very end here as well, okay? So those are the integer data types. Now let's look at the two different types of floating point variables you can have. So you can create a float. So you can do something like this. You can say um, val a float Right? And then you can say um, float equals 1.2345, right? Um, but here you're going to have to add an F there, okay? You have to have it. That is a syntactical requirement, right? See how right now the little red squiggles there? It requires you to put an F here for float, okay? Now if we want to do a double, then you can do something like this, a double, and then use that keyword double and then you can assign your double, okay? So there you go. Now, one more thing you can do, okay, let me give you one more example. You can also use E notation, okay? So E notation, E or E, for, you know, scientific notation, E or E. So this is E notes also, this is known as E notation or scientific notation, right? So let me give you an example of that. So you could do something like, um, Oh, val um, s for scientific notation equals 3.14159. Um, you know, then you wanted a whole bunch more decimal places, a whole bunch of zeros after it or for some reason. Then you could do E10, uh, right? So that would move that uh, floating point to the right by 10 places, right? If you want to move it to the left by 10 places, well, then you put the minus 10 in there. So you can use lowercase e, or you can use um, uppercase e. So you have all of those different options for creating variables, for making a constant version of those variables. Um, and let's take a look at, one more thing to take a look at. I didn't show you an example of it just before I forget. You know, you can also create the string, right? So val a string equals string, or not equal, sorry 
colon string equals goodbye we are done okay so you can also explicitly type your strings as well okay so i think that that is everything that i have for you in this video all right guys so that's going to bring this video to a close if you thought the video was useful please consider giving me a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked you've got that thumbs down as well if you're a student of mine as usual if you have any questions feel free to stop by my office hours hit me up on zoom send me an email and for the rest of you please consider supporting the channel in various ways we've got paid memberships with additional perks for as little as 99 cents a month we've got the super thanks you can leave a comment subscribe hit the bell so you know when new videos are released but most of all thanks for watching and we'll see you next time